Welcome to the Spiritualpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Christian, aka Love Pixel. And in each episode, we sit down with spiritual entrepreneurs sharing their knowledge, wisdom, and tools on their path to authentic success. Let's dive in. Yay! Welcome back to another episode with the Successful Spiritualpreneur Podcast. Today, super excited to have a very special guest for you guys. Her name is Luna Hart, and uh, her website is heartofhealth.com. And Luna is a expert all around uh, women's uh, women's fertility, women's uh, womb wellness, as well as coaches people all around somatic experiencing, and also has group programs uh, for all these uh, things and specialities. So we're really excited to have her on the podcast today, and um, we're excited to chat about cycle charting, astrology a little bit, and also you know, of course, fertility coaching. So because everything with Luna is about the womb. Okay. So welcome to the podcast, Luna. And yes, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Christian. It's good to be here. Yeah. Love it. All right. So as uh, since this is the Successful Spiritualpreneur podcast, we want to make sure people understand, you know, your story, where you come from and your journey on how you became the person you are today. So if you could give us a brief overview of your background, your highlights and, you know, some of your achievements in your own entrepreneurial journey, that would be fantastic. Yeah. So my business is a little bit of a reflection of my personal health journey. So I help my clients in the same way that I helped myself through some pretty huge health challenges at a very young age. And um, yeah, I think, you know, um, and I think this is kind of like a specialty for the people that you serve as bringing their, you know, passions to the world, because as you can imagine, you know, a healing journey and then making it a business, it has a lot of emotions and passion behind it. Um, but really like the broad stroke of the health journey was I had cyclical strep throat as a child and my really beloved stepdad who really thought he was doing the best he could at that time. Um, he wanted to keep me out of the doctor's office and specifically, um, they wanted to take my tonsils off tonsils, remove my tonsils. And I remember at a really young age, like, and I'm proud of my intelligence um, to know this, but I didn't want to have my tonsils removed. And his way to do that was to just put me on amoxicillin as if it was a vitamin throughout my whole growing up. And, you know, flash forward, we know so much about proper antibiotic use these days. And we know that you can overdo it and you shouldn't just throw it at every single thing that you have. Um, And really, unfortunately, what it was is I just, you know, destroyed my immune system. I ended up destroying my gut. So I do specialize in gut health. Um, And then eventually at age 21, I lost my cycle for a whole seven years. And that's kind of like the prime years of a woman's fertility. And um, yeah, just it was kind of like a dark time because like this was literally almost like two decades ago. And I'm so grateful that there's uh, more knowledge out there. Um, But back in the day when I didn't, when I wasn't menstruating and I had like a laundry list of symptoms and just was hating life, hating being in my body, honestly didn't know if I was going to make it. Um, People just wanted to continue to band-aid my experience and not get to the underlying root cause of what was going on for me. So um, I had to be my own health advocate. I had to deeply dive in and educate myself on health and hormones and gut health. And eventually um, environmental toxins was a big part of my healing journey. And um, really just, you know, went through the process of healing myself over many seasons, many years. It took way too long, actually. And what I offer today is hopefully a more expedited journey to healing and getting back to the body, getting back to just loving your menstrual cycle, even actually claiming it as a superpower. And um, just, you know, enjoying being a woman and being a cyclical body, um, loving food, 
Um, to be really honest, I was so sick at one time, I didn't think I could eat anything. Um, it was really scary. Uh, I have a really dear friend who knows me from that time period. She was like, oh yeah, she's like, I remember I was renting the room for, for, with you and like you were gonna like cook for us, but then we realized you had like all these like food restrictions and at the time, I think I was down to like three foods that I thought I could eat. And um, yeah, so I had to heal on a physical, mental, emotional, spiritual level and on a nervous system level. And that's, you know, the nervous system piece was huge with the food sensitivities. Um, and uh, yeah, I would consider myself a survivor because I felt like I battled some horrific infections. Like I actually had some kind of infection that even infectious disease specialists couldn't name. And it was like taking over my body. And uh, yeah, I just, you know, had to keep praying and I had to uh, stay diligent with my health protocols. And like I said, um, it was kind of a long journey, but I am 44 and I actually share like a lot about where I'm at now, which is quite balanced, quite resilient, actually. Like that's always what I wanted was resiliency. And um, yeah, even like, so I chart my cycle. I teach women how to chart their cycle and know that they're ovulating and I ovulate every cycle. I have incredibly balanced hormones at age 44 and feel like I live a very symptom-free life. Um, so that's what I hope for my clients to receive. So. Wow. Yeah. So you truly are, you know, a health warrior, you know? You've went through so much, you know, it's incredible, you know, yeah. and um, yeah, so, you know, I think, you know, one thing I really respect about your work is that, you know, everything you do is just coming from so much of your own experience, right? Mm -hmm. And what's interesting for me, or the question I have around that is what made you, like, what in you made they made the decision to say, well, I'm going to make this a business. I'm going to help other people with this versus just, you know, I'm just going to, you know, figure it out for myself and then that that's it. But like, th there's something extra, there's something, there, there needs to be an extra sort of passion there in order for that to happen. So can you speak to that? Yeah. And that was really clear in some of the darker moments um, where it was like, okay, this really bad. <laughs> And um, in the darker moments, the like light at the end of the tunnel was this is going to be meaningful. This is going to help others. You know, this is going to give me the information on how to heal so I can help others. It really was the light at the end of the tunnel. So, Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. And I think so far, like, have you, like, what have people, people said that work with you? Like, have you had you know, some, some positive experiences, some, you know, uh, how is it when you transform somebody's life like that? Because I feel it's in a whole another level, you know? Yeah. I feel, I feel like people just want to have someone that they trust and is like kind of looking in all directions for them. And sometimes it's like, you know, really out of my wheelhouse, but I'm like actually helping refer them to right places if it's not in my wheelhouse of what they're experiencing. And I feel often, you know, unfortunately with the medical system is it's really blinders are on and, you know, it's just so quickly that they want to diagnose and treat with a medication. And to be honest, if they can't do that, then they don't know what you have and they send you home or they gaslight you and tell you that you're crazy, nothing's wrong with you. So um, they, I, I give a lot of compassion and empathy to my clients because I've been there mm. and I can be like, okay, I understand you're feeling this way and, and can help them navigate and Really, I think a, a big part of my job too is getting people to trust themselves and trust their bodies again and trust their intuition. And I really try to hone on their intuition and mine alongside of functional lab work, um, also looking at cycle charts, um, but really kind of pulling it all together um, to know the best path forward to heal. Wow. 
Yeah, that's that's powerful, you know, and I think when you help people that way to empower themselves, it's just something that's so, I don't know, so fulfilling because it's not something that creates a dependency, you know. Mm-hmm. I think that's really, and how how you do it also, I think it's such, it's so soft, it's so feminine, it's so like we 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 massage it out, we sit it out together, you know, it's like a very trusting you know compassionate space that you invite your your clients into which you know i i very respect and i think it's it's incredible you know what trust can do when people feel safe you know i had this um conversation with my friend uh two years ago in costa rica and we we're just like you know what i think enlightenment is just being safe mm. gosh that's true because yeah. when you feel safe like wherever in your life you are, whether you're a billionaire or you're just starting out or whatever you are, like when you feel safe, you can take the next step, whatever that next step is for you. So I think the fact that you provide that space for, you know, the people you work with is like crucial. So I want mm-hmm. to honor you for that. I think it's very, very, very beautiful. Mm-hmm. So um, my next question would be when, like how long have you had your, online presence and how when when did you decide to create a website or a landing page for yourself like when did that all start yeah it was 2015 and i created my website on squarespace with a friend in a coffee shop because we didn't have good internet where i was living and um it was pretty rustic and you know it worked i actually started to do like a like my first thing to offer was like a spring cleanse and i still do this cleanse today and i actually have people who did it back with me in 2015 that did it with me last year so it's kind of cute it's my low ticket like just hop in let's do some work together um but yeah so that worked and it was functioning. People bought things, you know, the opt-in didn't work. It was like really, really, it's, things worked and some things didn't work. Um, but in some ways I was proud because it was like, you know, a gr- kind of like, okay, let's just get this off the ground and start offering something. Um, And then I did do some deeper training in 2019. That's when I became a functional health practitioner and learned how to read functional lab work. And that's where like my business went from the back burner to the front burner and like everything else dissipated that I was doing. And, um, and that's where I started to get really annoyed with my website and just be like, "Ah," you know, like not super proud of this. Um, And, you know, it's interesting. I'll be, I'll be honest. I worked with a couple of business coaches that they were like, whatever websites don't matter. And I have to disagree, Christian. Like I feel like such a huge up leveling in my business since I redesigned everything with love pixel, to be honest, like it really um, catapulted my business in such a big way. So, um, and that was, I guess, last beginning of last year that we did that a year ago. So, yeah, beautiful. I'm really happy to hear that. And I think just like anything in life, it's just energetics, right? And I think a website, oftentimes when we create that with, you know, our clients, it's just such a rebirth and such a big energetic overhaul when you kind of like, when you're ready to like invest yourself in that way, you just like, yeah, something's telling me I need to have something solid, something that really, and yeah, so it's just, it's that own self-reflection of your energy that's becoming now a digital manifestation of you, which is your website, right? And you're just like, yeah, I'm ready for something solid. And then usually it's just like, whoosh, so many new pathways open up. So that's that's really cool to hear. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And I had another question about your website, online presence, and brand. Like, when was the first time you started thinking about a brand? Brand, like, like I want to actually have these colors and these fonts. Like, was that something with the Squarespace site already? That was just like, yeah, for sure, these colors and these fonts. It was just, you know what, black and white. I'm starting with black and white and some pictures, and then you know, later down the road, I was like, no, you know what, I think it needs to be more branded. Everything differently positioned. I think I did a logo, yeah, in 2019. So that was kind of when I was 
doing the additional training. So I just finally had like more of an official logo that I just plopped on the website. Um, but the overall website did not have branding. Um, of course it had like a storyline and stuff like that, but it didn't have the feel of, of like a continuity throughout the website. So for somebody who's just starting out um, or doesn't really have an online brand, um, what, what, what is there any tips or strategies you recommend for developing an authentic online presence? Work with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, uh, you're, you're so sweet. <laughs> But, um, yeah, no, I think getting help is great. I think I do recommend getting help. Um, I mean, yeah, for me, like, I don't, I think that's why I didn't have it before because I couldn't really like, like I had a feel for it. Like I could tangible, kind of tangibly touch it. And then I, you know, I knew I wanted the, I knew what feel I wanted, but what it actually looked like and was going to be on a website, I had no idea. So um, I do feel like getting professional help is wise. Cool. Okay. And what, like, how do you think, like, is it like from, you know, a scale from one to 10, how, how important do you think a website is in somebody's, in somebody's business? Um, whether they're starting out, I mean, of course, people who are established, you know, that's clear. But when you start out, you think, should people first kind of like build traffic in an audience or first kind of have a website? Or what's your what's your take on that? Yeah, I think it's all about where you're coming in at. You know, if if finances are tight and you just need to get off the ground, I, I mean, I did get off the ground. I was functioning business, you know, for many years on a really horrible website um and it worked like people still signed up for with me um but i think you know when you have when you're ready to really truly invest and also for me like even like that investing in my business was like oh yeah just gave me more permission to even know my self-worth and my work um on some level so like even like notice myself feeling more comfortable raising my prices which you know so with healthcare, I do have this edge of like, I just, this should be free for everyone, you know? Um, but like, it just gave me more permission knowing the quality of work that I was providing. Um, and yeah, it gave me a sense of confidence for sure. So I would say when people are ready to, you know, take it to that next level, like the website is so important. I, f I feel. So. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like an important energetic milestone again, just like, you know, kind of tying into the last question. It's like it's that, that energetic milestone that kind of like manifests it more. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your offerings. Um, how many offerings do you currently kind of like roughly have and um, what are the kind of like different price points with, with these things? Just so people can get an idea of like, well, you know, you've been in business now for eight years. Is that correct? I consider like the, since it was on the front burners, kind of more the like true start. Um, and that was two, 2019. And that's when I became a functional health practitioner. So got it. So like Heart four health has been around since years. 2015, but yeah. Got it. So let's say four or five uh, years since, and since you've been, you know, taking it serious, so to say, um, what, what are the offer suites, the, the kind of like value ladder, if, if you will, um, that you can take people through if they're willing to, you know, invest in themselves and, you know, explore, you know, your services? Yeah. Well, I like to do a couple low ticket things throughout the year. So I do do like a spring cleanse that's $33. Um, just to get people engaging with me, getting great results. It's kind of also like a place of community service. Um, so I love doing that. And then I usually, and probably this fall, we'll do like even another group that's like kind of a medium ticket group program. I haven't set the price for that yet, but it will include some lab work um, in a group container. Uh, and then you know, I did just complete a, 
a, like an evergreen, learn to track your cycle, six modules. Um, and that's going to be just, I'm just launching that. So that feels really good. That's like a $111 um, six module, learn to tra track your cycle educational um, program. And then I have my, my core of my work, which is my one-on-one -on -one work. And I work with people everywhere from three months to a year. And I, I think my prices are probably still really crazy, um, uh, crazy low comparative to people doing something similar. Um, and I do have like a kind of a range in a, some of the packages include lab work and programs and, um, welcome gifts. So it's like, it's not, it's not all like, you know, there's different things in each package. So it's hard to itemize that, but I would say I'm spanning everywhere from a thousand to 6,000, um, per one-on-one -on -one package at this point. So. Got it. Okay, great. And um, let's talk a little bit about tools and platforms and, you know, technologies that you use to kind of facilitate that, you know, in your business. And what are, so let's talk about the platform that you use for your, web, for your website first, and then we can go into like email marketing and other, you know, online course and platforms that you use. Yeah, so WordPress for the website and um, yeah, I'm starting to find my way around. Um, so that's good. And and then um, for my my client management system is Keep, um, which is can be a little challenging. I don't highly recommend it, um, but at this point it's, it's, it's so a part of me that I'm not gonna personally change. Um, and I think obviously I don't really know what this is going to grow into. So I'm kind of glad there's room to grow with a system like that. Um, and then I use Biocanic. Have you ever heard of Biocanic? Mm -mm, no. I think it's it's more in my zone. Um, it's for practitioners like me, but um, it's my outward facing um, system, which house like all my clients lab work it itemizes their labs and like summarizes the findings it also is the place where i make um supplement recommendations and protocols and it's also where i um can move the programs so like the fertility awareness master class the cycle charting um program is all on there so yeah and it houses like my questionnaires and all sorts of things like that Cool. I like that. Yeah, I think it sounds like that's really good for, you know, the wellness health, you know, practitioner niche. Um, that's really yeah. cool. I've never heard of that. Um, what I want to talk a little bit more about these tools. What do you like and don't you like about WordPress? Because, you know, all platforms have pros and cons. So I really want to, you know, open the conversation to just like have an honest conversation about these platforms. Be like, yeah, this I didn't like, but this I like about it. And so, yeah, what, what do or don't you like about WordPress, working with WordPress? I haven't done too much, to be honest. I mean, I've had my website for just a year. I'm just actually starting to to put the for the program on there and also get my cleanse up. But um, and then the most that I do is right now is just uploading blogs. And the thing with the blogs that I find just a little tricky is like it doesn't give you much room to like center some of the text and maybe use a different font or a different color. And maybe you can, but I find it like really challenging um, just even the blog uploading. I had more options even in Squarespace to just kind of make it look pretty. Um, so that's maybe just because I don't know how to use it quite well. Um, so that's really all. I wouldn't say I'm a WordPress. Um, like I, I could use support still. So <laughs> yeah. Cool. And what do you think about Keep? What do you like or don't you like about Keep? Well, the greatest thing I like about Keep is it was really handed down to me from one of my business uh, teachers, who's also another practitioner. And, you know, I feel grateful that I, I'm kind of like, you know, I get their support. I do pay for it, but like I um, get constant, like, you know, check-ins and like ways to optimize my system. 
And thank goodness they're like staying on the pulse of all the changes. Um, so I would say keep on my own would have been a total disaster. Um, the, the reason why keep is successful for me is because I have a, a community backing me with keep and we're all doing the same thing. So together we're figuring out how to use the system the best for our businesses. Got it. Yeah. So here, note maybe at this, on this uh, point to wherever you're struggling with in your business, maybe try to join a Facebook group or even, you know, maybe sometimes, you know, the platforms themselves have some sort of community platform, but a lot of times it helps to join those, you know, Facebook groups or communities to kind of figure out your little problems. Um, so that's, that's really cool. And as the next questions, um, I wanted to ask a little bit more about, you know, how you manage to kind of like, like what makes you successful in your business, right? Like, why do you think your business is successful? Did you grow an audience? Did you, um, did you grow an email list or what, what do you think made you uh, successful over the years? Uh, really amazing referrals. Uh, I owe my whole business to referrals and, um, yeah, I do take good care of my referral partners, uh, offering, offering commission, but I think they're also just really referring me. A lot of my referral partners are past clients, or people who know me really well and can just feel very comfortable referring their clients or their friends or their family members to me. Um, so yeah, I would say I would say ninety five percent of my business is just a really strong referral base. Great, yeah, and that's the best type of you know customers because they come with such a high level of trust. So it's really great mm -hmm. to have that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And in terms of social media, are you very active on social or just, you know, maybe not very active? What's your, you know, social landscape look like? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not crazy, but like I do post like five times a week. Uh, and, you know, it's pretty crazy. Oh, is that pretty crazy? Okay. <laughs> like I know people do two times a day and like, so I'm, I'm like, mm, you know, and I'll take time off. Um, but yeah, and I do get some people through Instagram at this point too. I, I really love Instagram more, but I also post on Facebook. I don't feel like I'm as engaged on Facebook. Um, yeah, I have a LinkedIn profile that I don't really use. Um, but like Instagram, I I get on at least like during the weekdays every day. Cool. And what what type of content do you post on there? All sorts of stuff. Um, right now, I am talking about fertility awareness and cervical fluid and basal body temperature. I actually had my first post taken down. Uh <laughs> Interesting. Why is that? Because I was showing cervical fluid. I guess you can't do that. Um, but <laughs> Interesting, yeah. yeah. And uh, I talk about gut health a bunch. I talk about environmental toxins. Um yeah, just hormones, coming off birth control. Uh, I talk about the lab work and I share my lab work. Uh, last year, I had a great time like doing all the tests on my body and actually showing it to the world and showing them what I found and like how like this has been a process um, to get to this place. And, um, and then I also just love to do IG lives every once in a while. Um, so yeah, just kind of a little bit of everything. And and what do you talk about on your IG lives? Like, what do you think is a, a good topics? They they just come to you, or you think uh, these are kind of like my three pillars I always talk about, or what's is there anything that guides you there? Yeah, I I think we're just I go intuitive with it, and uh, so I have one coming up. We're going to talk about the preconception journey. Um, and it's another practitioner that I'm going to be slightly interviewing because that is part of my zone is supporting women with their bodies before they actually am embarking on trying to get pregnant, whether they're having fertility challenges or not. And this practitioner, actually, she's been in that journey and, and kind of struggling. And I wanted her to come on the IG live and just share her journey. She's had a few miscarriages. So talking about pregnancy loss 
And um, we're just going to get into what she's personally doing to try to optimize her fertility. And I'm going to share some insights also. So we're doing that one on March 1st. And that's all I have scheduled right now. But Cool. That's great. Um, so I think the, the next question is really going to have no, no problems with it because you are already so authentic. But uh, how do you maintain authenticity and like, you know, connect personally with, with your audience, like especially on social media and, you know, posting, et cetera, et cetera? I think, yeah, as an extreme introvert, um, when I first embarked, like even like back in 2015, when I first started the website and trying to put myself out there, it was kind of like, the door opened and then I shut it and I was like, Oh my God, <laughs> like, no, you know, just like, it was kind of scary to be online. And I had to like actually just get to a place eventually where a, I wanted this business so bad that I just didn't care anymore. And, um, and it was just time and you got to allow yourself to not be perfect. Um, you know, if you're putting on a, on a mask and a prasad that like you have it all together all the time and like it's always perfect you're always showing up just you know glowing um then it's you know that's not what people want people want to know you're a real person dealing with real things um and then also like it was helpful just to start sharing my journey and uh i find that a lot of people really gravitate towards that and are grateful to hear about, you know, a, a success, you know, a health success. And, um, and yeah, I just, I think, I think those two things, like letting go of being perfect and, and just, you know, being more vulnerable with my actual shares have been helpful. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm also, you know, in the process of, you know, building a personal brand apart from the agency, of course. And um, I see how sometimes when you get in this mode of like, oh, I have to, like, I have to create content now, it's like, kind of like it's sometimes annoying, you know. But then again, if you just don't do it, then you just don't do it, you know. So for me, the question is like, how, like, what is a good balance? Like, what do you, is there anything, any tool you use to support you on these, on this journey or, um, I mean, for me, for example, the three topics I'm most passionate about is, you know, website branding, you know, that's one kind of like pillar that I love to talk about. Then I have tea. I love tea. I always have tea with me when I, when I drink, when I design, when I, you know, do anything, I love tea. Um, and then number three is spirituality. That's why, you know, mm -hmm. spiritual preneur podcast. Um, but yeah, like, what do you, what do you suggest for, you know, like what could be a cool, you know, how, how can, how can you be consistent with content without getting it too, you know, scripted or too like, uh, you know, how do you keep the excitement in the content? I guess a good question. Well, I have to just plug Laura Dawn a little bit. I mean, her program was really amazing. Um, I felt like that helped a lot. Like I think sometimes obviously getting a business coach, that's also a visionary, um, can be really supportive for you to just kind of dust off whatever you're holding, you know, and just remember reminding yourself what you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, microdosing has been really helpful. Um, I use, I have a microdosing practice, um, and especially if I am going to write content, um, sometimes that is a really good time for me to hone in and use some plant allies. Um, and then, you know, just taking, having space, obviously, like I think these things of being creative don't happen if we're constantly in the go, go, go mode. You have to actually plug it into your calendar and say, hey, this, hmm. this is the space for creation. So, yeah, that's beautiful. And so you do have that. You have that scheduled uh, once a week or something like that. You sit down for two hours and write write a blog post. Um, it's always Wednesdays or Thursdays or something like that. And Yeah, I'm doing it. Like, I think I implemented more clarity around doing the work with Laura Dawn. Um, but yeah, Mondays. <laughs> Mondays are my good days. Fridays too. And I'm just actually seeing clients Tuesday through Thursday. 
Um, so I just kind of like create more space for writing and then also admin work on Mondays and then a little bit on Friday. So cool. I like that. And, um, what's your favorite tea? <laughs> Random well, question. I mean, I love matcha, like I'm definitely like, you know, a little, little matcha fan. Um, yeah, I also like herbally, I like roasted dandelion and burdock a lot. Beautiful. Yeah. That's your those, those are great choices. My favorite, my all time favorite tea is um, Japanese uh, Fukamushi Sencha. So it's a deep steamed Japanese green tea, basically. So it, it tastes very, very vegetable, very green, very grassy. I love that kind of like freshness of the green tea. Yeah. Amazing. I know. Yeah. It's exciting. Um, so, okay. Cool. And with the matcha, I want to say that one secret tip or trick with the matcha I always do is like I put my milk or whatever I use use with the matcha. Um, if you're not drinking it pure, um, I always put that in the frother. Mm-hmm. Right. And I also like on the bottom, I put a little bit of water with the matcha. Then I, you know, press the frother um, and then it just mixes it really good because you can do it with the whisk, right, with the bamboo whisk, which works. Um, but, uh, the frother works amazing. No clumps. And then you put the milk on top. Boom. Amazing. I'll try that. So, so maybe if you have a frother, try that. If you don't have a frother, get a frother. Change my life. Okay. Like, I put, <laughs> I put all kinds of stuff in the frother. I put like, uh, you know, vanilla pudding sometimes to just like, you know, make the powder in there with the liquid. I'm like, I put everything in the frother. Um, mud water is uh, very popular these days. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's also something called the uh, everyday dose, which is matcha, um, by Tenzo tea. Tenzo is like a American matcha brand. They get their stuff from Japan too. Um, of course, where else? And, um, but they put in collagen and other stuff into, in like mm-hmm. different mushrooms, like reishi mushrooms. So if, if you're curious about a different type of matcha, try everyday dose. Okay. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. And then I do you, like mud add water. Things I think. In with my matcha. That's kind of my style. So yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. 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 I love tea. Okay. We're going to just talk about tea in the next uh, 15 minutes. I love it. Um, yeah. Also, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm so excited about tea. I even started my own Amazon brand. Um, it's called one with tea. Um, so I started that last year and then we ordered, uh, I think it was a hundred kilo worth of tea from Japan, uh, Japanese Sencha Fukumushi, which is my favorite. It's like, you know, start with one product, can I make that big and then see where that leads. And they actually took it down because I had in the description saying can prevent cancer. So Amazon took down the product and now I have to restart again, new SKU, Amazon number, blah, blah, blah. You know, the whole shebang, uh, lost all the reviews, but you know, it's part of, part of the journey. And I think mm-hmm. it kind of like that it's like the lesson in, in business like or in life. It's like, if you want something so bad, it just doesn't matter. Like you could take that down, that tea down as often as you want. Like I'm going to put my tea back up there because I just love tea. You know, I think it's really something that brings me into the present moment and centers mm-hmm. myself, you know, like in my life, everything's about love and tea brings this element of presence. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah um okay cool so uh for the last uh, couple minutes that we have here uh for our podcast i would love to know any type of you know you know work-life balance tips and tricks routines hacks uh, some some herbs some you know secret this secret that that you take maybe some supplements anything that you have uh cooking over there <laughs> well um I think we all have our different outlets. I mean, I think it's just so important that we have our places to let go. I have a three person infrared sauna right there. So that's staring me in the face and is definitely a huge resource for me as a highly sensitive individual um, and through my health journey. So that's been a good ally. What Um, What does infrared do? Sorry to stop you there, but a lot of times people, they hear red light, infrared, but like, what does it actually do? And I think you might know. <laughs> That's what I'm asking. Yeah. I mean, it definitely penetrates deeper into the body. The waves actually can penetrate into the organs and actually help you detox on a visceral level. 
And a lot of people experience that. The other thing that's nice about infrared is it's like, heating you at kind of a lower temperature and you're getting a full body sweat like waterfall style but you're not like roasting at like 180 degrees it's more like 130 um so it's kind of nice for people who run hot or like you know maybe have more of a fiery constitution um but yeah a lot of people they'll say like i'll put them in there and they'll they'll like go to the bathroom and feel like they like peed out something you know like their pee really stinks or you know the body odor smells a little differently afterwards um and it does like just it goes in really deep and gets you to like kind of really sweat some toxins out so i do that at least once a week so that's important beautiful Um, number one infrared okay infrared what else Um, for me i mean i um I personally work online. I, so I stare at screens a lot and I'm just getting outside is so crucial. Um, so I make sure at least once a day I'm outside, um, hopefully staring at the sun, getting sun on my face, walking my dog and maybe taking that longer hike, at least doing like 30 minute walk, even if it's cold. Um, so being outside is just super, super crucial. Um, And then along that same lines, I think also getting offline and being with people. (laughs) Um, So, you know, I'm happy that I do have some work that I participate in that's, you know, more in person work. And then, um, you know, also just going out um, dancing or going to my Pilates classes, um, just going out and being with people, doing things active with people seem to be important balance. for being an online entrepreneur. Beautiful. Um, let's talk about a question that just came through. Um, and that is, what is a good substitute for coffee? Like, I mean, other than tea, obviously. Uh, is there any like herbal things that you recommend, like other than green and black tea, because obviously those are very caffeinated. But what is a good substitute for coffee if somebody's looking to maybe substitute one cup a day or something like that what what's something that could be good yeah I think a lot of people are using caffeine because their adrenals are fried so as a functional health practitioner it's always getting to the root cause which is really assessing the amount of stress you have currently in your life and realizing that you do have a capacity you can only take on a certain amount of stress before you need to move into that more parasympathetic and allow your body to integrate and rest and restore and regenerate. So I would just, you know, that is number one always is assessing stress. And then sometimes it is just improving your energy and your, which is a hormone. It's called cortisol. And it's like really the minute we wake up, cortisol is supposed to be rising in the day and then cruising down and um, decreasing into the night. And so how to improve cortisol during the day is getting that movement and sun in the morning. I've had clients who had like uh, cortisol that was just like, just flat, like they weren't having an awakening awakening response, we call it. Um, And just by including movement and sunlight on the skin in the morning, they were able to improve their their adrenals and their cortisol production. And then similar, it's like you have to also improve that ability to wind down into the evening and getting off the screens, getting off the blue lights, allowing the, the house to dim and allowing yourself to rest more when it's dark outside. So I think just actually that, um, there's a you know really great ad- adaptogens like ashwagandha and stuff like that, but really just improving your adrenals um, by addressing stress and improving your just natural energy production in the day. So. Beautiful. Yeah, I think that's very helpful. Um, even I have tested myself and my adrenals are definitely like fatigued for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's super helpful. I appreciate that. And um, yeah, that's super helpful advice. Um, okay, so for the last couple of minutes of uh, this podcast, I'd love to get your you know opinion on 
what are your future what's your future vision with your business um is there anything new you're thinking of starting uh anything you see in the coaching industry or in the wellness industry that you see is kind of like up and coming for people to kind of like you know somebody wants to stay on the trend so to say and um yeah what are you what are you looking to call in for yourself yeah and if i was just gonna like just think big um would be you know i've had a retreat vision since i was in high school and um it's like evolved like i had it when i was in college and then like you know even lived on 150 acres where i actually actualized a retreat for a period of time in northern california and um, was actually assisting people in like deep deep dive cleanses like i would consider the cleanses that i was providing were quite heroic cleanses um where people would stay with me for seven days and it was just a good taste of that. I have a natural like hostess in me. Um, and I also think just really honestly with the rapid movement of AI, I just do wonder what um, online presence is gonna be. Um, I saw a, a local practitioner here share a cloned image of himself talking. It was an AI generated, somebody generated an image of him talking and it looked just like him it was a little glitchy like you could, could tell that it was a robot like a image but like it's kind of like hmm, there's gonna be a moment when we're you know on social media and we're gonna be like is this luna or is this ai you know so i just i think at a certain point i think the in-person engagements and retreat style settings are going to be the most crucial to be in. Um, so that's hopefully like a, a, the bigger vision for the future. Yeah. Yeah. And that's um, also the purpose of this podcast is like to be hang out with people, you know, I mean, even though it's virtual, it's like we're spending time together and we're having a connection, right. And other people are listening or watching this and they get something out of that, of this authenticity of this, like, unscripted talking right mm -hmm. um so it's really it's it's fascinating feel like we use a lot of ai in our agency especially chat for copywriting etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, we always refine it obviously with you know somebody else's or that person's essence um but for sure i think you know in five years we're going to have a lot of ai avatars talking to us online and um yeah it's just crazy because they're so they're gonna be very perfect and they know exactly what to do and it's good, but like at some point there's like there's like a disconnect because like, wow, how can you be so perfect? But then you're like, you know, it's it's gonna be very interesting like to to, to see the 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 socio political changes that come with AI. Um, very, very interesting. The interesting thing with that practitioner that I was telling you about is the AI was saying things that weren't true. So that was like the edge. It's like, not only like, is it generating like something that looked just like him speaking, but it was saying things that he would never say, like that were not true. So that's, that's a little edgy, <laughs> but we'll get through it. Um, we'll figure our ways out. And yeah, just remembering human connection is important. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So last question what uh like what key piece of advice would you give um any spiritual entrepreneurs whether they're starting out or already established like what's what's the one thing that you should uh, you know take into account when becoming a spiritual entrepreneur oh such a good question uh, i would just say that it, it's not going to be easy necessarily i mean creating the business of your dreams uh, you, you, you have to face all the parts of yourself that you doubt any, um, any places that are holding you back. Um, and really, truly there's going to be highs and lows and you just have to ride them smoother. And that's what I feel like, you know, even now when I'm like, you know, four or five years into my business, it's like, Oh, it's a slow okay great let's just sit back and enjoy it um while you know i can have the big months that just like totally totally take care of my year almost you know so um i do feel like 
that is part of being an entrepreneur. And at first, it's not the steady paycheck that maybe someone's used to, but it is worth it in the end, in my eyes, because I do create my reality. I am doing my passion work. Um, I get to create my schedule. I get to go to Costa Rica in a couple of weeks. Um, and this is all because I've created this life and this business. So Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for sharing all your wisdom and your experience and your heart with us on this podcast. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Luna. Welcome, Christian. <laughs>